Hi everyone, Jenny with On Fire Fit and welcome to day two of week five of our battle plan. Words are meaningless without intent and follow through. I touched on this a little bit yesterday about how I could read a lot of things but without the intention to make use of them and the actual follow through that includes action, they didn't really help me in the past and now I have gotten to where I really take a hold of words and make them turn into action and that's what I want for you as well. So we can apply that to our giant, whatever that might be. Some of you are along for the ride with me on the health wagon and this is critical because there are a zillion diets out there filled with lots of words and instructions, but until you actually follow through on them, they won't do anything for you. And I think we all know that, but somehow we still lose sight of the fact that we actually have to put into action things. We th sometimes think that there will, there will come a day when it will just all click. And what we really have to do is what I said yesterday. We have to step out and grab a hold of the promises, the victory that God already gave us, and that is through our action. So as you look at this, I'm, yesterday we talked about our um, possibilities for why we have failed in the past. Today I want to talk a little bit more about solutions, and perhaps you've done this before, or maybe you haven't, but when we look at the stories in the Bible of all the battles and the times that people won and the times that people lost, we find a lot of similarities and some of the solutions that have really triggered people to start to rely on God and move into the victory that they already have, even though they might not be acting like it. One area is to drive sin out of your life altogether. As far as living on this earth, we know we're not going to be without sin, but if you have known sin in your life, something that you have not driven out altogether. It's what we would consider maybe like a habitual sin. That is something that we really need to rectify with God and put effort into banishing altogether. And one of the main reasons is because it separates us from God. When we are separated from God because we know we're doing something we shouldn't be doing, we kind of have that inkling of shame and guilt, maybe hiding things, whatever, it causes you to be disconnected. And when you're disconnected from your main power source, you're not going to walk in victory. You are going to be in a perpetual cycle of trying and failing. And so when you drive sin out of your life altogether, and you just really make the effort not to go into that anymore, you will start to feel like you have more of that connection. And it's really not like your action that does it. It's because Jesus already forgave you, but you are intentionally accepting that day after day and choosing not to walk in that old lifestyle anymore. So that would be one area. When we don't follow through on what we know to do, it absolutely sucks the victory out of your life. It sucks freedom out of your life. And I know it sounds like a very weird tension to live in that when you are being really diligent and working through something that you know you're supposed to be doing, it doesn't sound like freedom. But it actually is because the more you practice it, the more you feel like, oh, okay, I can do this. And you rely on God, of course, but he is in a partnership with us. He is promising to give us his power. He promises to give us self-control. But when we sit back and just expect him to do all the work, we, we get to a point of being lazy. So we have to be intentional. We have to have a plan, anticipate the things that might come our way that are normally the things that throw us off track, and then make a plan and resolve that we are not going to fall back into that again. And the last one on this ties into that is that 
Knowing that God gave you a purpose and that your victory actually comes from living according to that purpose that he gave you. And I'm going to talk about that as it applies to my life a little bit more specifically because I have had issues that all now I can see them kind of intertwining. Um, I have a jaw issue. A lot of you know that I've had a stomach issue. I also have known for a long time that I am supposed to be writing and this is part, what you are reading right now is part of what I feel like God has called me to do. And this is how it's intertwined for me. I have not had a weight issue per se in my life. However, I have had problems where sometimes I would have to go long periods of time without eating because my intestines were um, basically what has happened is they flipped around and we don't know if it came from birth or if it came at some point in my life. I've always had digestive issues, but because of that, I would go long periods of time without eating because it triggered the whole thing to start moving, which caused pain. And because I was holding off eating for so long at, in the evenings, I would eat a lot and then I would go lie down and that kind of gave it room so that it could move around. But it also created this perpetual cycle of eating too much, which also is probably not good for your digestion. On top of that, I got to where we all know red wine is good for you and to a certain extent it has, you know, so many good benefits, but when you get to the point where you're drinking it every day or you're having more than a glass or whatever the case might be, I would do that at times in my life for my jaw because it was a natural relaxer and it was either that or Advil. And I realized that it was also making me so that I didn't spend as much time eating correctly, spending time writing, staying focused on my goal. And so it all kind of intertwined and they, there's excuses for all of it, of course, just like I'm sure you have excuses for all kinds of things that you have going on in your life. But when I got to the point where I said, my purpose is to love the Lord my God with all my mind, with all my heart, with all my soul, with all my strength, and to love my neighbor as myself so that they can live a life on fire for God, loving God with all their heart, mind, soul, and strength. When I realize that's your purpose, these things like eating too much in the evening or drinking wine, were working against that purpose. So now when I have moments where it's hard and I'm like, I really would rather just have a glass of wine than try to um, deal with this ache or whatever the case might be, I remind myself, what is your purpose? Do you want to work against what God has laid out for you to do? Or do you trust that by following through, by claiming that promise, what by walking in action in the direction that he has put on your heart, that he will take you where you need to go? And a lot of this is um, something you really need to give thought to because it doesn't really click until you give time to think about it. You need to know your why. You need to know why this is important to you. You need to know why this giant is worth defeating because otherwise you will rush back and you'll retreat for another day, week, month, year, whatever, until you finally start to realize that I better face the giant again. So this is the time this is the place. So let's get moving. Sorry, this video is a little longer, but I wanted to share my personal application on this. I hope that you go out today and every day and live your life on fire.